Not two weeks ago, private security workers were threatening a massive strike in September over salary increases. A settlement agreement has now been reached with their employer. Kungwini Amalgamated Workers Union Coordinator Kumbulani Moyo gives us more details around this agreement. And thank you so much, Kumbulani, for uh, joining us. Good morning to you. Uh, just share with us the uh, details around uh, this wage agreement. What does it look like? Uh, morning to your viewers and also morning to all security officers. And uh, the security was uh, the, the agreement was concluded uh, on on the on the uh, yesterday uh, on the twelfth. And um, the it looks um, the way which we anticipated as unions and also in terms of what we're mandated by our members. Uh, it's going to be a four-year agreement uh, that on the first year we've managed to scrape what is called a premium allowance, which uh, had taken us long in those engagements with the employers. You'll remember we had uh, raised that issue to say it's a stumbling block in terms of making sure that we unlock what we will call a, a proper basic salary. So on the first year, uh, the, we managed to get out of the 16% that we we're demanding when the premium allowance is incorporated and then a further increase, we managed to get around 13%, which is roughly uh, 690 on what we we're targeting of 900, which we mandated by our members. Mm. Then on the second year that follows, we managed to get a 7% increase on the new basic salary, 7.5% on the new basic salary on the third year, and 7.5% on, uh, on the last year. So it's going to be a four-year agreement that we conversed to our members. It was tabled by uh, the commissioners and facilitators when both parties couldn't uh, see eye to eye. Mm. And then our members mandated that we can sign to that agreement that averted the national strike that was going to be a massive strike. Over and above 500,000 employees were going to partake in that strike. Right. Uh, what provoked, uh, you know, the threat of, of a strike, just in terms of the workers' perspective and what they were going through financially? I mean, in late August, uh, the private security wage talks were already in deadlock at the time. And I understand you threatened that 500 of the uh, over 2.5 million private security uh, officers and workers and guards uh, were going to strike if their concerns and their demands were not met. What almost provoked that decision that should you continue to hit a deadlock, th then you would have no choice but to strike? It was uh, the stubbornness and unwillingness of the employers. The, the, the employers' organization, which are three of them, which was Sansa and Sansi and CEO, they represent most of the security companies within this country. Uh, and also what they were tabling in terms of the the three-year proposal that we tabled, it was far below the inflation. They were only tabling less than, on the first year, they were only tabling less than 0.5%. Then uh, on the consecutive years, which was the second and the third year, they were only tabling 3.5%, which was far below where the inflation was sitting. The inflation rate during that time, it was around 7.8%. So we <coughs> couldn't even uh, go back to our members and say, this is how the negotiations have been going, because it had taken us more than four or five months uh, trying to, to show them different angles of the approach and also trying to make them listen to the demands of the workers, because they were the lowly paid. Uh, they were just uh, less than 2% uh, from the minimum wage, and they were working abnormal hours, and also their working conditions were not proper in terms of uh, the, the years that we've engaged with them. So there were a lot of factors that we us to say, if they don't want to meet some of our demands, then we'll be left with no option to call all our members to put their tools down and go into the industrial action. Yeah, and just again, uh, before I, I let you go, I mean, just on uh, the uh, uh, financial difficulties that the uh, officers and workers were going through in that salary alone, paint us a picture briefly, if you may, just in terms of how much they were struggling. Um, I think at times, you know, uh, companies or even, uh, you know, any, you know, infrastructure may enjoy the, the, the leisure of having security officers, private security officers who are registered, uh, protecting infrastructure or even people, but not necessarily understanding that they could barely meet the basic needs uh, within their households. 
Yeah, you would know uh, with the advent of the war in uh, in uh, in in Ukraine and uh, in Russia, uh, how the prices skyrocketed. But before then, there was also the issue of the COVID pandemic that also dilapidated the infrastructure of the rail. Most of the security officers, their transportation is through rail transport to bigger cities, especially in the bigger cities. And uh, with uh, the petrol going up, and also it had a further added in terms of their financial challenges. Mm. They were spending next to about uh, 40 to 50 percent of their basic salaries towards transportation, which they couldn't pay. They need even their means, uh, uh, daily means. Uh, some they even during before we started these negotiations, they were saying if uh, they, we don't get anything uh, next to the 900 rand, then which means, unfortunately, we are not going to continue going to work because whatever we are receiving, we are spending on transportation and food, and we can't even uh, uh, buy any other issues that will allow our lives mm. to move on. So those were some of the financial challenges that they were facing. And their basic salary couldn't allow them to be able to access any financial assistance, either from the banks or maybe apply for a bond or a subsidiary from <laughs> government if you apply for a bond. So our main uh, collective as the 28 unions was to make sure that we drive the essence of that uh, they need to get a decent basic salary that will allow them to be able to access some of the financial benefit that the middle class has. So which we, as the 28 unions that we're negotiating, right. which we have said in these basic salaries that we've staggered, they will be able to put our members at a better level and be able to move on with their lives. Well, I appreciate you speaking to us and giving us this uh, feedback.